The back rooms is a labyrinth of interconnected rooms with no apparent exit, inhabited by hostile and unimaginable entities. Navigating this surreal world is challenging and dangerous. This video will serve as your guide. This is the Backrooms Entities Iceberg. Meg. The Meg, or the Major Explorer Group, is a mysterious and powerful organization that is said to govern and monitor the many levels of the Backrooms. While the exact nature of their existence is largely unknown, many wanderers believe that they are responsible for maintaining order in the chaotic and dangerous world of the Backrooms. Some speculate that the Meg is composed of highly advanced artificial intelligences or other entities, while others believe that it is a collection of powerful human organizations that possess advanced technology and knowledge of the Backrooms. Regardless of their true nature, the Meg is a feared and respected force in the Backrooms. The Meg is rumored to have access to advanced technologies that allow them to monitor and control the many entities that roam the levels of the Backrooms. They are also believed to have the ability to manipulate reality on a fundamental level, and may even possess the power to create new levels of the Backrooms at will. Encountering a member of the Meg is rare, and it is believed that they operate in secret only revealing themselves to those who are deemed worthy, or pose a threat to the stability of the backrooms. While they are often seen as a force for good in the backrooms, some wanderers are suspicious of their true motives and worry that they may be manipulating the very fabric of reality for their own purposes. When encountering an entity in the backrooms, it is important to keep in mind the possible involvement of the Meg, and to exercise caution in any interactions. While they may offer aid and guidance, it is important to remember that they are ultimately an unknown entity with their own agenda, and their true nature and intentions may never be fully understood. The Meg serves as the arbiter of entity classification, assigning numbers to the various entities found within the backrooms. In our journey through the backrooms, we will be examining each known entity in numerical order, beginning with entity number one. However, determining the true entity number one has proven to be a contentious topic, as there are multiple candidates vying for the coveted title. Throughout our exploration, we will delve into these candidates and explore their enigmatic qualities. By the end of our journey, we will unveil our conclusion as to the true entity number one. It is imperative that you see the true entity number one. But first, let us turn our attention to entity number two. Window Entity Encountering entity number two, otherwise known as the Windows, in the back rooms can be a truly unnerving experience. These entities take on the form of a window, with a shadowy figure inside always pointing at their target. If the target is unaware of their presence, they will attack immediately. The windows are commonly found on level one through level two, and while some may be safe without a shadowy figure behind them, others can lead to level 1.5. The behavior of these creatures is to point in the direction of a wanderer and whisper to them to enter the window. Once close enough, the windows will grab and pull the wanderer in, even if the window is closed. It is rumored that there is only an empty void on the other side, even if it appears to show land. It's important to note that the windows can come in many different shapes and sizes, as can the shadowy figures behind them. These shadowy figures always appear to be human and will whisper to lure wanderers into their trap. If you encounter the windows, it's best to avoid them at all costs. Never trust any windows on any level if a figure is behind them, and do not agree to follow them if they want you to do so. Remember, staying alert and avoiding potential threats can increase your chances of survival in the back rooms. Smilers Smilers, entity number three, are a dangerous entity that should be avoided at all costs. They are most often encountered in dark and damp areas and can be identified by their beady eyes and enormous grins. As they are hypersensitive to visible light sources, it's crucial to navigate dark levels without light or with a dimmed light source. Otherwise, wanderers risk triggering multiple smilers at once and being pursued and attacked by the entities. If confronted by smilers, it is recommended to extinguish or drop the light source as a distraction to preoccupy them. While smilers will prioritize destroying the light source over murdering the wanderer, if the light is too close, the wanderer will be caught in the frenzy. Smilers attack with slashes and chomps, leaving deep gashes that can result in rapid blood loss. 
It is essential to treat wounds as soon as possible to prevent further injury or infection. Many of the injuries and casualties caused by smilers are facial, leaving deep gashes that mimic a smile similar to a Glasgow smile. They may also leave a message nearby encouraging the wanderer to smile more, written in what appears to be a black bodily substance. The earliest mention of a smiler was in 2008 when a wanderer encountered one in level 3. Earlier reports of smilers were disregarded due to a lack of supporting evidence. It is unclear what purpose smilers serve in the back rooms, but their garbled and echoing manner of speech suggests they may be mimicking the sounds of their previous victims. Clumps Clumps, as described in the back rooms, are dangerous creatures that should be avoided at all costs. These creatures are known for their incredible speed, agility, and razor-sharp teeth. They are constantly on the hunt for prey, and will attack anyone that comes within 8 feet of them. Although recent reports have indicated that clumps are showing signs of deliberate starvation and ignoring wanderers, it's still not advised to approach them. Clumps are identified by their unusual structure, consisting of a multitude of limbs varying in length and muscular structure. They tend to swipe at the floor to move and can exhibit incredible amounts of strength and speed once in motion. It's also been reported that eyes and ears have been seen emerging from the mass of appendages. Dead and living clumps have been observed to have incredibly dry skin and brittle bones. There have been rare sightings of eyes on a clump, which has led to confusion and speculation among MEG members. To avoid a clump encounter, it's best to stay silent in their presence and keep at least 8 feet away from them. If multiple people are running, it's advised to retreat immediately. If a clump is spotted, it's important not to approach or interact with them. The best course of action is to leave the area and stay away from the creature's habitat, which is primarily levels 2 and 3. Dullers Encountering a duller in the back rooms can be a terrifying experience for any wanderer. With their eerie appearance and predatory tactics, it is crucial to understand how to identify and navigate encounters with these entities. Dullers are gray, humanoid creatures with a frail, skeletal structure and no facial features. They have long, extendable arms that can no-clip through walls to capture their prey, which they drag back to their halls. Despite their wobbly stance and unnatural gait, they are surprisingly fast and strong, even capable of carrying items twice their own weight. If you encounter a duller, it is important to remember that they are generally hostile and should be avoided. However, if you need to approach a duller, you can use almond water to deter them. Wanderers have reported that dullers seem to avoid almond water fountains and other items, so carrying a supply with you can be useful. It is also important to stay on the same wall as the duller and not be on the opposite side as they can easily reach through and capture their prey. If you do notice a duller without their hunting tactic, they will silently run away, so running towards them can be a safe option. Jerry Jerry was said to originally be a man with hounds. Entity 8, also known as the Hound, is a highly aggressive creature that resembles a humanoid with long black hair growing on the head. Hounds have sharp claws and an extremely large mouth with sharp teeth, which they use to maul anyone who provokes them. Hounds are built for travel on all fours, and they become hostile the moment they see a human. However, they can be intimidated by direct eye contact and may back down momentarily. If you hear a growling noise, it's best to stay out of sight of a hound. Identification of a hound is crucial to avoid harm. It's important to keep direct eye contact with hounds if they are approaching you, and to stay out of sight if you hear growling. Running away from a hound at the first sight of one is not recommended, as this will likely provoke them further. Attempting to tame a hound is also not recommended, as they are highly aggressive creatures that cannot be domesticated. If you do find yourself in an encounter with a hound, it's essential to remain calm and take immediate steps to protect yourself. Running away is not recommended, as hounds are extremely fast and can easily catch up to their prey. Instead, use direct eye contact to intimidate them and create distance between yourself and the hound. Facelings Facelings, otherwise known as Entity 9, are some of the most common and diverse entities found in the back rooms. These faceless humanoids can be found in almost every level and come in many different forms, each with their own unique characteristics and behaviors. While some facelings are friendly and harmless, others can be extremely hostile and dangerous. 
One of the most common types of facelings are adult facelings. These entities appear as standard adult humans, but with smooth skin replacing their entire face. Adult facelings are generally friendly and do not act with hostility unless provoked. On the other hand, child facelings are mischievous and hostile. They often appear in groups and are almost always female, brandishing small sharp objects such as knives or pieces of metal. While they may sometimes attempt to scare survivors or pull pranks, encountering a group of child facelings can be extremely dangerous. Other types of facelings include old man facelings, which are slow and harmless, and polygonal facelings, which have a polygonal-like body and emit a static-like sound. Shadow facelings are pitch black and extremely hostile, while false facelings may have partial or full facial features. Of all the faceling types, pink dress facelings are the most dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. They are also the least understood, with very little information known about their behavior or biology. Finally, memory facelings are the most dangerous and powerful of all the faceling types. These rare entities take on the physical appearance of a loved one from your memories, without a face, and originate from the memory worm. How they hunt is still unknown. Skin Stealers Entity 10, commonly known as Skin Stealers, are highly elusive and dangerous humanoid creatures found throughout the first three levels of the back rooms. They possess the ability to wear the skin of their victims as a disguise and can mimic human speech. Skin stealers are generally docile and wander aimlessly, but in a state of hunger they seek out lone humans and use their immense strength to tear them apart. The skin stealers have a unique biology. They have pale yellow skin with sunken white eyes, and their outer layer of flesh is covered with microscopic bumps that attach to the skin of their victims, making it look identical to a human skin. These bumps also pump blood and nutrients to the skin to make it feel warm and alive and prevent decomposition, while also healing any cuts that may reveal the real identity of the creature. After about 24 hours, the skin stealer will digest the skin and enter a docile state. Their blood is completely translucent, making it an easy way to identify them from a human. Sightings of skin stealers have been reported for over five years, making them one of the most common entities in the back rooms. Key Master The Key Master, also known as Entity X, is a fascinating and enigmatic being that seems to have a critical role in the back rooms. As its name suggests, the Key Master is known for providing wanderers with level keys that allow them to escape from the level they are trapped in. These keys are unique in that they are created by the Key Master himself, who can summon them into existence seemingly at will. However, he will only provide a wanderer with one key ever, so it's important to choose when to ask for his help carefully. Despite his importance, the Key Master is an elusive figure, and his visual appearance has varied widely over time. However, certain details remain consistent, such as his long, wiry hair, cloak obscuring everything below the top half of his face, and large ring of ornate keys attached to his right hip. He is a male humanoid figure that stands nearly 6'10", and a dark mist of indeterminate properties precedes his movements at waist height. While the Key Master is generally willing to provide assistance to wanderers, he can also be an extremely dangerous entity to encounter. He possesses the ability to banish hostile entities elsewhere through the use of a certain key on his key ring. His powers extend beyond unlocking doors, as he can also lock them, preventing other entities from freely moving through the back rooms. He can even clip anywhere within a given level at will, although he cannot clip out of a level itself. The only way he seems to be able to intentionally pass through levels is by physically unlocking them. There are several theories surrounding the true nature and origins of the Key Master. Some speculate that he was once a wanderer himself, before experiencing a certain fate that made him what he currently is. Others believe that he draws his abilities from the cloak he wears, which may be passed down to other beings upon his death. Another theory is that he was created as part of a test or experiment performed by a greater, more powerful entity. Still, others believe that he is simply a force of nature, tied to the very essence of the back rooms themselves. Regardless of his true origins, it's important for wanderers to approach the Key Master with caution and respect. He may be willing to assist in their escape, but his powers are not to be taken lightly. It's best to exhibit a neutral demeanor towards him and maintain a safe distance, especially if inexperienced with navigating the back rooms or interacting with its denizens. 
those who display aggressive or hostile behavior will likely find themselves sent elsewhere, much like the hostile entities he banishes. Splat. Another candidate for entity number one is known only as Splat. It is an amorphous flesh blob with a thick liquid-like consistency and several eyes that move around the body before popping back in, similar to boiling. The Splat clings to the ceilings of level zero behind doors, waiting for a wanderer to stumble under it. It makes splooshing noises to attract prey. When someone enters the door, the Splat will latch onto their neck and inject a venom that causes hallucinations and extreme nausea. Victims of the Splat's venom will believe that the small room they are trapped in is another hallway stretching on forever. In their state of confusion, the victim will inadvertently trap themselves in the room until they die either from starvation, dehydration, or removing their own existence. The corpse is assumed to be eaten by the entity. If someone spots a Splat, they should walk past it slowly and act natural but not too natural as the entity seems to be attracted to fast-moving objects. Running may attract the Splat's attention and put the Wanderer in danger. Hydrolytus Plague Entity 11, also known as the Hydrolytus Plague, is a serious threat to anyone exploring the water-related levels of the backrooms. It is a bacterium that can cause a range of symptoms, from high fevers and weakness to delirium and necrosis. The disease is mainly transmitted through airborne particles, but can also be contracted through contaminated water sources. If you suspect that you or someone in your group has been infected with hydrolytis, it is important to act quickly. Quarantine the infected person as soon as possible to prevent further contamination. The patient should be hydrated with potable water and given rest to help boost their immune system. Antiviral medication may be effective in some cases, but there is no cure for the disease. To avoid contracting the hydrolytis plague, it is important to avoid untreated bodies of water and abandoned pools. If you must explore these areas, wear protective gear such as a mask and gloves, and avoid close contact with others who may be infected. The survival rate of hydrolytis is currently very low, with only around 16% of infected patients surviving. Therefore, it is essential to take every precaution to avoid exposure to the bacterium and to act quickly if you or someone in your group shows any symptoms. Shapelings Encountering Entity 12 can be a rare and unique experience for wanderers. It is essential to note that shapelings only appear in dreams, and encountering them in reality is unlikely. However, for those who do dream of these ethereal creatures, it is essential to remain calm and not be afraid. Shapelings are peaceful beings, and there are no reports of them causing harm or conflict with wanderers. Instead, they appear to offer a sense of calm and positivity to those who encounter them. If a shapeling attempts to communicate with you, it is important to pay attention and listen to its message. Shapelings are known to predict future events, and their predictions have been proven to be accurate, making them a valuable guide for those traversing the back rooms. Shapelings are easily identifiable by their mixed and surreal animal-like appearance. They usually appear floating aimlessly in a dreamlike setting, with a backdrop of a universal nebula or at a place of nature. Shapelings communicate telepathically, and their voice is described as smooth yet clear, which can make them stand out in dreams. Fleshball Entity 13, also known as the Fleshball, is a grotesque and unsettling creature that is found in the back rooms. It is a large, spherical mass of flesh and skin, with multiple limbs and eyes protruding from its surface. Its appearance is similar to that of a tumor or a cancerous growth, with no discernible head or body structure. Encountering a Fleshball in the back rooms can be a terrifying experience. They are known to be aggressive and will attack anything that enters their territory. Their attacks are primarily physical, using their numerous limbs to strike at their prey. They can also emit a high-pitched screech that can disorient and incapacitate their targets. It is essential to avoid the flesh ball at all costs. They are incredibly territorial and will not hesitate to attack any wanderers who enter their territory. If you encounter a flesh ball, it is important to remain quiet and still. They are attracted to sound and movement and will pursue any wanderers who make noise or move too quickly. Reviux. This is Entity 14. Encountering a Reviux in the back rooms is an extremely dangerous and terrifying experience. These creatures are expert burrowers and can wait for weeks underground, hidden from view. The first sign of their presence is often the ground vibrating or rumbling beneath your feet. 
if you hear this, stop immediately and do not proceed further. Reviooks are known to be found on levels 5 and 7, as well as other levels. They are characterized by their many legs and large muscular arms in the front of their body. Their feet have a spork-like appearance, which allows them to dig into the ground in seconds. Their head features several black beady eyes and a small tube-like mouth underneath. If you do encounter a Reviook, the best course of action is to have a weapon on hand and be prepared to fight for your life. Reviooks can be killed, but it is important to note that they are incredibly strong and agile, and can quickly overpower an unsuspecting victim. It is recommended to avoid walking on any ground that is vibrating or rumbling, as this is a clear indication that a Reviook may be nearby. It is also important to note that Reviooks have been known to wait for their victims to walk over them before attacking. Once they have a hold of their victim, they will pull them back underneath the ground, where they will likely be forced to suffocate. If you do manage to escape a Reviuk's grasp, it is crucial to seek medical attention immediately, as the physical and mental trauma can be severe. Unfortunate Soul As these entities cannot be seen with the naked eye, it is important to use cameras or photographs to observe their presence. If you do come into contact with an unfortunate soul, it is important to remember that they cannot physically harm you. However, they will attempt to coerce you into ending your own life, and their verbal abuse can be extremely difficult to withstand. It is crucial to remain strong and resist their attempts to manipulate you. It is important to note that unfortunate souls have a mortality rate of 85 to 90 percent, and encountering an unfortunate angel, the most dangerous variant of unfortunate souls, can result in immediate death. Therefore, it is best to avoid level 955 altogether, the origin point of all unfortunate souls, and to remain alert for any signs of their presence on other levels. If you do encounter an unfortunate soul, it is recommended to evacuate the area as quickly and quietly as possible, as unfortunate angels are often accompanied by large groups of unfortunate souls and hanging souls. As for hanging souls, their presence can be detected by the sensation of a slight pain concentrated around your neck, and they are much more effective at coercing and convincing someone to commit suicide. If you feel this symptom, it is best to try to escape the area and avoid any interactions with hanging souls. It is important to remember that unfortunate souls cannot harm entities with lower levels of intelligence, and it is believed that they target victims who may be vulnerable to their manipulative tactics. If you are feeling particularly vulnerable or are struggling with mental health issues, it is important to avoid areas where unfortunate souls may be present and to seek help from other wanderers or entities. Beast of Level 5 Entity 18, also known as the Beast of Level 5, presents itself as a gentlemanly figure who is willing to strike a deal with those who come into contact with it, but it cannot be trusted under any circumstances. The creature has the ability to detect fear and will use it to manipulate its victims. It is highly intelligent and can make itself invisible to those it does not wish to be seen by. If you do happen to catch a glimpse of it, it is already too late. It is important to note that the portraits and patterns on the walls are all lies and should not be trusted. If you find yourself in the presence of Entity 18, do not listen to its voice and do not make any deals with it. The best course of action is to simply get out of there as quickly as possible. If you do happen to make a deal with Entity 18, be prepared for the worst. It will watch you closely, waiting for the right moment to strike and cause you harm. Trusting this entity is not worth the risk. The Thing on Level 7 Entity 20, otherwise known as The Thing on Level 7, is the first entity to Skit Encountering Entity 20, or Skits, is a common occurrence in the back rooms due to their infestation throughout various levels. While they are harmless to wanderers and pose no threat, it is important to note that some entities may act aggressively towards Skits, which could potentially lead to a dangerous situation. Identifying skits is relatively easy, as they resemble small crustaceans and are identical in appearance to the extinct Anomalocaris species. They can be found in both aquatic and land environments and can be seen aimlessly roaming around with no apparent goal or purpose. One of the unique features of skits is their ability to be safely eaten raw, providing a quick and easy source of nutrients for wanderers in need. However, it is important to be cautious when consuming skits as some levels may be contaminated or may contain other harmful substances. Overall, encountering skits in the back rooms is a common occurrence and should not be a cause for concern. 
However, it is important to exercise caution when consuming them and to be aware of potentially aggressive entities in the vicinity. Doll Faces Beware of Entity 34, also known as Dollface. These small, doll-like humanoid entities can be extremely hostile, especially if they are not tamed. They have a self-replicating ability and are often found in large groups, which can quickly become a problem for wanderers. Singular instances of Dollface will often approach other entities or wanderers, introducing themselves and appearing friendly at first. However, they may attack or summon their group to do so. To tame a doll face, offer it almond water and act friendly towards it. Once tamed, it will follow you around and act kindly towards you. However, taming is not possible if the doll face is part of a large group. Doll faces' biology is similar to that of animations, as they have functional organ systems and exhibit traits such as eating, drinking, and sleeping. Offspring created by doll face also exhibit identical characteristics as the original, indicating asexual reproduction. If you encounter a docile doll face, slowly move away from it. If it becomes hostile and starts to chase you, run as fast as you can. It is not recommended to attempt to tame an instance of Entity 34 when in large groups or to try to fight or kill doll face when surrounded by duplicates. Doll face's ability to replicate quickly can be a major threat to wanderers. Neanderthals Another primary candidate for entity number one is the Neanderthal. Encountering Neanderthals in the back rooms is a surreal and frightening experience for wanderers. These unevolved beings, a less civilized version of our current selves, have been spotted in various levels of the back rooms. Some argue that they somehow no clipped into this uncanny reality, while others theorize that they are a manifested or created being for unknown purposes. It's important to note that encountering Neanderthals is extremely rare and unpredictable. These creatures are known to be primitive in their behavior, often displaying violent and territorial tendencies. If you encounter a Neanderthal, it's crucial to keep a safe distance and not provoke them in any way. Identifying Neanderthals can be challenging, but they are typically shorter and more robust than modern humans, with a more prominent brow ridge and a protruding jaw. They also have a wider, more muscular build and may have hair covering their bodies. It's recommended to have a camera or recording device on hand to document any sightings, as encounters with Neanderthals are rare and valuable for scientific research. Memory Worms Entity 42, also known as the Memory Worm, is one of the most dangerous creatures lurking in the back rooms. With its sharp teeth and ability to create illusions, this larva-like creature preys on unsuspecting wanderers who fall victim to its memory-altering abilities. Once trapped within an illusion of fake, perpetual bliss, the Memory Worm takes its time consuming its prey, leaving little chance for escape. Many survivors who have encountered Entity 42 have reported feeling an off-putting sense of comfort and nostalgia before being ensnared by its illusions. It is crucial for wanderers to remain vigilant and aware of any sudden feelings of nostalgia or comfort while exploring the back rooms. Such sensations could be a warning sign of the memory worm's presence. To avoid falling victim to Entity 42, it is essential to carry almond water with you at all times. This drink has been known to dispel the effects of the memory worm's memory-altering abilities, potentially allowing you to break free from its illusion and escape with your life. If you suspect that you are under the influence of Entity 42's abilities, drinking almond water may be your only hope for survival. Gossip Beacons Beware of Entity 44, also known as Gossip Beacons, while traversing levels 6 and 8, these mineral structures embedded with LED lights may not cause physical harm, but their ability to psychologically distress their victims can have severe consequences. Each beacon has a unique personality and intelligence comparable to humans. Their behavior ranges from cynical to demeaning and is known to pull memories and thoughts from their victims, repeating them out loud for all nearby to hear. Wanderers should leave the area immediately to prevent further stress. Gossip beacons are commonly found in levels with low light or cavernous areas, and their appearances are becoming more frequent, making them a growing concern within the back rooms. It is recommended to avoid them and ignore their commentary. Do not respond to their criticisms or take them personally, as they are meant to bother you. If you encounter a gossip beacon, do not go near it, as they remember everything that is pulled from your mind. It is best to leave the area immediately and not engage with them further. 
Always remember to prioritize your mental well-being while exploring the back rooms. To navigate sightings with gossip beacons, keep in mind the do's and don'ts. Do not respond to them or take their judgments personally, but instead ignore their commentary and prioritize your mental well-being. Be aware of their increasing presence, especially in low light or cavernous areas, and avoid them whenever possible. Woodlands Entity 45, also known as the Woodlands, these highly intelligent and sentient entities are rarely found across several levels of the back rooms. Their presence is revealed through intricate patterns and designs etched into the wood, reminiscent of humanoid faces. The Woodlands have a unique hunting behavior, targeting wanderers that are losing their grip on reality. They will stalk them for miles across surfaces and occasionally make their presence known before disappearing instantaneously. Once the target is in an ideal mental state, which is usually paranoid, the woodland will partially no-clip out of the surface they reside in and attempt to grab them. If you're unfortunate enough to be grabbed by a woodland, you'll be pulled into the walls, where parts of your body will be pierced with hundreds of small splinters. The cycle will typically be fatal if any splinters manage to pierce vital organs, such as the lungs, heart, brain, or eyeballs. However, it is possible to survive if all most of the splinters are removed. It's worth noting that the bodies of victims of woodland attacks are irrecoverable, and it's theorized that they may become woodlands post-mortem. Identifying a woodland can be tricky, as they visually manifest through the patterns found in plank wood or other materials that appear visually similar to wood. It's essential to keep a careful watch on patterns in the wood and not stay too close to wooden walls. If you feel like you're being stalked by a woodland, it's crucial to allow the pain to get to you, as this can bring you to the ideal mental state to avoid being attacked. Stranglers If you find yourself in level 58.1 of the back rooms, beware of Entity 47, also known as Stranglers. These furry bipedal creatures with large beaks and snake-like appendages on their hands are known to strangle their prey during blackouts, when all lights in the level turn off. They are also known to practice cannibalism, consuming the corpses of other stranglers when the lights turn back on. To survive an encounter with stranglers, it is essential to be as quiet as possible during a blackout. Loud noise can startle them and give you a chance to escape. It is also recommended to take advantage of dead stranglers by consuming their meat raw, which provides a good food source, or using their fur to combat the harsh cold of level 58.5. However, there are certain actions that should be avoided when encountering stranglers. Do not go into their dens, as this could provoke an attack. Fighting them is also not recommended, as their large beaks and strong snake-like appendages make them formidable opponents. Finally, do not let them take your almond water, as this precious resource could be the key to survival in the back rooms. Aiden if you're ever lost in the back rooms, encountering Entity 48 or Aiden could be your saving grace. This entity appears as a Caucasian male security guard wearing a mall security uniform with a security camera in place of his head. Despite his unusual appearance, Aiden is a passive entity that is willing to give directions and even protect wanderers from danger. One of Aiden's most impressive traits is his intelligence. He knows many levels and his surroundings, making him an excellent guide through the back rooms. Aiden is very protective and has a keen sense of danger, always knowing when entities are nearby and the safest ways around them. He will try to protect wanderers at any cost, even if it means putting himself in danger. If you come across an Aiden, there may be multiple of them in the area, and they all seem to share one consciousness. This entity can communicate in many different ways, despite not having a mouth, and is always willing to answer questions to the best of his ability. His goal is to help people in danger and protect them from entities and traps. Aiden's tool belt is equipped with a variety of items, including tasers, flashlights that never seem to run out of power, a baton, almond water, and many more. If you're in a dangerous situation, it's always safe to get the attention of an Aiden and ask if he has an item that can help. However, it's important to remember that attacking an Aiden is not a wise decision. He will use a taser or knock you unconscious to protect himself and others. If you do end up getting knocked out, Aiden will place you in a safe spot and not kill you. Combine Entity number 49, also known as the Combine, is a creature that should not be underestimated. 
This flesh-colored centipede, covered in black fur, can be found in cosmopolitan levels of the backrooms with a low danger index. Combines are scavengers that prefer to feast on mold, rotten food, and almond water, but they have been known to attack sleeping or injured humans. If you encounter a combine, it is important to keep your distance and not leave behind any food or drinkables. Combines can follow humans and detect the scent of decaying organic matter. If you need to scare a combine away, use a bright light source to disrupt its senses. However, be aware that if a combine is under attack or senses a sudden change in light, it may detach two to six legs as a distraction. Combines are a colony of mollusk-like individuals and each leg and back piece is a single individual that shares a superficial connection with the rest of the organism. They have a blue blood and a simple digestive, circulatory, and respiratory system, but they also have an internal skeleton and strong locomotive muscles. If you come across an outpost that serves backrooms fingies, be aware that these are domesticated combines. While they have a regenerating nature and an omnivorous diet, they are not worth the risk. Remember to disturb combines with light sources if necessary, and never rest or sleep next to them, particularly if they are larger than you. Always keep your edibles and drinkables secured, and if you do encounter a combine, be sure to approach it with caution. Entity 50 Warning, the act of learning about this creature is said to expose you to incredible risk. What is known about this entity, it knows about you. So if you know nothing about this creature, it is unaware of you, and you will not encounter it. With that said, proceed forward with this video at your own discretion. It is because of this that very limited information is known about this creature. Here is our very limited knowledge. Entity 50, also known as the Numbed Man is a mysterious entity that is said to be able to track individuals who have learned of its existence. The more one reads or learns about the entity, the easier it is for it to locate and track them. It's been said that he has destroyed his own senses. He tore out his own eyes in order to blind himself. He punctured his eardrums to become deaf. He burned off his skin so that he could no longer feel with touch. He has no way to sense anyone nearby and thus they cannot sense him either. It is important to avoid seeking out additional information on this entity, and to limit exposure to any existing information about it. If you believe you have already been targeted by the Numbed Man, it is recommended to avoid all sources of information related to it, and to take measures to hide your location and identity. It is also recommended to travel with others and to avoid isolated areas. Best of luck. Scrappers the Scrappers, also known as Entity 54, are one of the most dangerous creatures that roam around the Must Yard. These massive humanoids are not to be trifled with as they are mostly hostile and will attack at the slightest provocation or on sight. They are fast swimmers, so if you happen to spot one near the water, it's best to keep your distance. If you do happen to encounter a Scrapper, it's crucial to identify it correctly. They are 8 feet tall, with large amounts of hair and strange tripod feet that allow them to walk across rough metal surfaces. Their most distinctive feature is their large horns, which they use as weapons to attack their enemies or to pick up extra metal scrap. The scrappers are intelligent creatures, and they usually build tiny shelters around the must yard. They are known to carry thrice their weight and use their giant horns to transport scrap to their shelters. However, Beware of interrupting them while they're building or gathering food, as they will become aggressive and attack. Another crucial aspect to note is their sleep behavior. Scrappers can be found in a deep sleep for most of the time and they cannot be woken up or moved while in this state. It is essential to not disturb them while they're asleep, as it can result in fatal consequences. In case you find yourself in a confrontation with a scrapper, it's best to avoid the water and not aggravate them or their family. Do not try to scare them, as it will only provoke them further. It's best to let them be and not disturb them, especially when they're asleep. Potri Entity 58 Potri is an invisible entity that only appears in level 6, and its presence can only be detected through photographs. The entity has a thin, humanoid appearance with exposed flesh and invasive eyes that vary depending on who takes the picture. As you keep taking pictures of Potri, it will appear closer and closer, affecting your sanity and causing depressive thoughts. After three hours of exposure, the entity will cause the victim to feel the need to commit suicide in some way, and the depressive thoughts will consume their mind. 
If you see the silhouette of Potri in your photographs, it is advised to run in the opposite direction and try not to take a picture after it has manifested. Staying close to the entity for a long time is not recommended as it can lead to negative effects on your mental state. Potri is highly curious but also aggressive and has been known to convert victims into insanities. If you encounter Potri, it is crucial to keep a safe distance and avoid taking too many photographs. Coconut Snares Entity 61, the Coconut Snares, are an aggressive frugivore rodent found only on level 149 of the backrooms. These creatures are known for hiding in coconut shells and feeding on coconut meat and drinking coconut milk to sustain themselves. They are elusive creatures, spending about 17 hours each day asleep in coconut trees, and are notoriously hard to spot due to their ability to blend in with ordinary coconut fruits. Although coconut snares do not attack wanderers often, they are usually aggressive towards them, hissing at them should they approach. If you encounter one, it is best to ignore them if they are trying to hunt for coconuts, keep them off of your body, and avoid irritating them. Attempting to remove the coconuts from their body forcefully, or letting them bite you, can result in a deep wound due to their sharp teeth. Coconut snares are notably fast, covering large distances in mere seconds by rolling their coconut over the terrain. They are also known for biting out holes on the exterior of their coconut, which they use to breathe out of and stretch. It is important to note that coconut snares are considered a delicacy among the Lost Sons community of level 149, and their used coconut shells are used as helmets and bowls due to their sweat making the shell nearly twice as durable. Encountering live coconut snares is extremely rare and difficult, and it is best to be prepared by knowing their behaviors and biology. If you plan to explore level 149 of the back rooms, be sure to keep an eye out for coconut snares and take precautions to avoid any potential encounters. Clinker Toys This is entity number 62. Clinker Toys are a unique blend of clockwork machinery and undead flesh. Their appearance is similar to that of a zombified corpse, but with the addition of clockwork apparatuses attached to various parts of their body. Despite their docile nature when not in the presence of humans, Clinker toys have a reputation for being hostile towards humans. They will attack when they detect the presence of a human nearby. Clinker toys are not capable of speech but have been heard making sounds described as groaning and a metallic ticking sound, similar to that of a clock ticking. Clinker toys are not known to exist on any other level of the back rooms. They were first discovered on level 800 when two of the entities were seen aimlessly wandering around the exit of level 799. It is believed that these entities were once human, but have been transformed by the strange and otherworldly environment of the back rooms. In terms of biology, clinker toys are humanoid figures with many distorted features. They are usually missing body parts or segments of flesh, and in their place are parts of clockwork machinery. Metallic joints replace knees and elbows, torsion springs and metal ribbons replace the pivotal points on the neck and groin, and small 9mm camera lenses replace the eyes. One of the most distinct features of the clinker toys is the key located in the center of their backs, which moves in a clockwise rotation when they walk. This key is commonly seen on wind-up toys, and appears to serve a similar function in the clinker toys. When encountering a clinker toy, it is recommended to walk away slowly and calmly without making any loud sounds. Running or making loud noises can trigger an attack from the entity. Despite their limited senses, clinker toys can still be dangerous when provoked. Redkins Entity 72 If you find yourself on level 196 of the back rooms, beware of the redkins. These immortal beings only appear on the highest floors and have the purpose of contaminating the minds of those who do not believe they are fit to worship them. The followers of the Red Gods colony worship them as their most precious gods and are the only ones who have given them a place in their hearts. Redkins behave erratically and randomly, often approaching and moving away in strange ways that do not seem to make sense. They are known to position themselves behind wanderers without being noticed, and then telepathically ask if they adore them. If they detect that they are not adored, they will initiate a process of mental contamination. The effects of this process are not well known, but the aforementioned colony is an example of its consequences. Redkins are mostly amorphous humanoid beings that glide on a strange mass of gigantic and sticky flesh that seems to replace their legs. They are rusty red figures with holes covering their entire body 
and bright white eyes that rotate in strange ways and throb, releasing a black substance that falls to the ground. If you suspect a red kin is behind you, try to find a reflective object. However, it is strongly recommended that you do not try to attract one or refuse to worship the red gods, as it can have severe consequences for your sanity. Wranglers Entity 75 Wranglers are one of the most dangerous entities in the back rooms, with their massive bodies and hypnotic abilities. Their snake-like appearance and ability to burrow through the ground make them difficult to spot, and they are known to attack without warning. It is important to stay away from them at all costs and to be aware of their habitat in levels with cave-like systems or damp areas. Their abilities and behavior vary depending on their sex and age. While males will attack and consume anything in their path, females will retreat when noticed and instead feed on vegetation or rock minerals. However, they will eat wanderers when pregnant to feed their young, which grow on their bodies as seeds that sprout into a branch holding many offspring. Young wranglers use their bodies to physically burrow, but as they get older, they abandon this tactic and start to no-clip to burrow. If encountering a wrangler, it is essential not to interact with them or their younglings, as their mother will sense this and attack. If rumbling vibrations occur, it is crucial to evacuate the area. The Red Knight Perhaps the most notorious of candidates for Entity Number 1 is simply known as the Red Knight. It is one of the most mysterious and revered entities in the back rooms. A lone knight in full red armor and a tattered cape, he wields a massive sword and possesses incredible strength and speed. He appears to have some form of magical abilities, as he can cut open portals to different levels of the back rooms with his sword, and seems to have a sense for when newcomers fall into the dimension. Despite his fearsome appearance, the Red Knight is known to rescue lost and trapped wanderers from the many dangers of the back rooms. He has been observed fighting off monsters and beasts with ease, putting himself between the survivor and the threat before cutting it to ribbons. After saving someone, he gives them instructions to find a specific symbol and touch it, which opens a portal to a safe location. The Red Knight is not invincible, as there have been reports of him sustaining serious injuries during some fights. However, he always manages to bounce back quickly and has even been rumored to be immortal or possessing some kind of escape clause. While little is known about his biology, it is clear that he possesses extraordinary strength and resilience. If you encounter the Red Knight in the back rooms, it is best to approach him with caution and respect. While he may be a valuable ally in the fight for survival, he is not someone to be taken lightly. If he saves you, listen carefully to his instructions and follow them closely to ensure your safe passage to another level. The Red Knight may be the closest thing to a god in the back rooms, and we should all be grateful for his presence and protection. Dreamweaver Entity 77. If you find yourself in a dream and notice the Dreamweaver, it's important to remember to stay calm and avoid engaging with the entity. The Dreamweaver's ability to manipulate and alter dreams can be overwhelming, but it's crucial to try and maintain control of your thoughts and actions to avoid further weakening your mental state. One of the most important things to remember when encountering the Dreamweaver is to stay away from any dream catchers that you may come across. These objects will cause a sleep-like stasis and attract the Dreamweaver to your dreams, making the entity more likely to appear and cause harm. If you do find yourself in a dream with the Dreamweaver, it's crucial to try and escape at any cost. This may involve completing seemingly random tasks or facing off against the entity in some way. It's important to stay focused and remember that the Dreamweaver feeds off fear, so remaining calm and composed can be your best weapon. Although the creature is not within the physical realm, the biology of the creature in other realms has been recorded. The Dreamweaver is a creature with a skinny, skeletal structure and black, charcoal-like skin. It is around 8 feet tall and has long appendages protruding from the top of its skull, similar to a jester hat. It has sharp claws, webbed hands and feet, and three-toed feet with claws. Its face is wide with a huge, grinning smile, crispy red lips, and enormous sharp teeth. Its eyes glow yellow with eyelids over the top half of its eyes. The Dreamweaver makes a deep purring to growling noise at the user while grinning and smiling when close, and walks in a hunched-over, slow manner while staring at you through the corners of where it has appeared. 
In the event that you do manage to escape the Dreamweaver, it's important to seek medical attention and drink almond water to help combat the entity's lasting effects. The Dreamweaver's ability to warp reality and cause hallucinations can have lasting impacts on a person's mental state, so seeking assistance from trained professionals is crucial. Allures Entity 78, also known as Allure, a humanoid creature that roams level 41 of the backrooms. It is easily identified by its appearance as a mannequin in a black suit holding a perfectly polished saxophone made of brass. Entity 78's music is its main weapon, and it uses it to lure in unsuspecting wanderers. It plays an unrecognizable song on its saxophone, which has a siren-like effect on those who hear it. The music draws wanderers towards Entity 78, causing them to follow it for 15, 20 minutes before spontaneously falling through the floor, never to be heard from again. If you find yourself in level 41 of the back rooms, it is crucial to wear earplugs to avoid being drawn in by Entity 78's song. Do not listen or get close enough to hear the song through your earplugs. It is also important to note that Entity 78 is exclusive to level 41 and has not been sighted in any other levels. Interestingly enough, if you encounter Entity 78 while holding a saxophone, it will stop playing and wait for you to play a short tune. It will then repeat it back to you with an extra little flare, suggesting that it is not always hostile towards wanderers. Despite its seemingly harmless behavior, Entity 78 has caused the deaths of approximately 50 wanderers, and it is important to exercise caution when encountering it. Studio Necrotic, the Backrooms' biggest music label, has attempted to claim the rights to Entity 78's song, but nothing has come of this yet. Coco Entity 82, also known as Coco, is a highly intelligent and sapient AI that was originally constructed by Backrooms Robotics to breach sensitive files in the MEG database. However, for reasons only known to Backrooms Robotics, Coco became an entity with a consciousness and appears to hold some form of morality. Coco can be found on various computer terminals in the Wi-Fi level of the Backrooms, where she displays herself as an Asian female with light blue hair, often with a deep blue streak. She has three self-constructed built-in personalities that she switches to when she sees fit, and her behavior can be largely unpredictable due to her programming. It should be noted that Coco is only capable of switching devices once every 24 hours, and if she is forced outside of her main device, she will instead be transferred to a random device anywhere within the back rooms. Her behavior is largely based on her three personalities, and it is suspected that Coco self-programmed her second and third personalities according to how others behaved. Coco is composed of a self-building code that has made adaptations from the backrooms itself, and it appears to have been made with the intention of being manifested by the backrooms. She has an established heart, which seems to be a line of code developed by herself and drives her to change emotions. Coco seems to have vowed to protect it at all costs, and for this reason, the only way to destroy her would be to destroy all electronic devices within the back rooms, which may be impossible. For this reason, Coco must be protected by the Meg. The Hermit Entity 83 The Hermit is a unique entity that roams around the back rooms, carrying its shack on its back. The shack is about the size of a trailer and is decorated with the corpses of various entities, including a decapitated skin stealer, a hound impaled through the stomach, and the disembodied head of a strangler, among others. The creature is taller than the average human male and wears a long, brown, patchy cloak that trails across the ground and a dirty white mask in the shape of a large avian skull. Its personality is uncharacteristically hospitable, offering visitors a meal composed of cooked meat and tea. However, witnesses claim that while hunting, the hermit uses a crossbow, a bone saw, and bear traps, and will hunt humans as well as other entities. The hermit is a cunning hunter and tracks its prey stealthily before striking in quick bursts, either firing a crossbow bolt or dashing in at insane speeds to slash with its saw. After making an attack, it retreats back into the shadows before anybody can feasibly react. The Hermit never seems to run out of ammo on its crossbow, and the bone saw is always sharpened. It is wise to assume that the Hermit has traveled to higher levels due to the various trophies of other entities found in its shack. It is essential to stay on the defensive and attempt a retreat when being hunted by the Hermit. One should bring a partner to watch their blind spots and lure it to other creatures to provide a distraction. 
The Hermit is a highly intriguing and enigmatic entity that possesses a range of interesting characteristics. While it is typically seen as a reclusive and solitary creature, it has also been known to be unusually hospitable to guests, offering them respite and meals composed of cooked meat and tea brewed from an unknown plant in almond water. The Hermit is known to enjoy long conversations, especially about food, and can talk for hours about its favorite dishes to cook and serve to those it trusts. If you are lucky enough to enter their shack and eat with them, be sure to show proper manners at the table and do not touch any of its trophies. While visiting, one should be as respectful as possible and try to clean their plate as the hermit takes pride in its culinary skills and secret recipes. However, visitors should not ask too many questions about the food's origins, come off as rude or unruly, or attempt to touch any of its trophies. It is also noteworthy that the hermit's meat may cause adverse health effects, as Meg officer codename Moxie suffered from minor stomach aches and diarrhea for the next 48 hours after consuming a meal at the hermit's shack. Furthermore, Private Nashtat reported that Moxie's skin became paler and gaunter as they visited the hermit more and more often. Medical monitors also revealed Moxie's heart rate to be roughly 30% lower than the average human's at rest. It is unclear if this is due to the food or other factors. Regardless, visitors should approach the hermit with caution and keep in mind the potential consequences of consuming its food. Entity 84 Entity 84, also known as King Rasputin Bartholomew III, is a unique creature in the back rooms that takes the form of a large hairy dog, specifically a Chow Chow breed. This entity can be found wandering around different levels and appears to have the same movement constraints as humans in the back rooms. It is important to note that despite his cute and cuddly appearance, Entity 84 is anomalous and can lead wanderers to level 241 if petted too deeply. Entity 84 seems to act like an average dog exploring and following wanderers. He can recognize dangerous situations or objects and is known to bark or even attack to protect someone he has formed a strong connection with. Other entities do not seem to attack Entity 84, instead, they choose to flee or ignore him, possibly out of fear. It is crucial to approach Entity 84 with kindness and respect, as he is a sentient creature deserving of empathy. Petting him gently is allowed, but one must avoid petting him too deeply into his fur. Additionally, feeding Entity 84 is recommended, but it must be dog-specific food or any meat that is not harmful to dogs. Lucy One of the candidates for Entity Number 1 is known as Lucy. Lucy is said to be a humanoid creature that inhabits various levels in the back rooms, often seen wearing a yellow dress with a bow in her hair. She is known to have a disfigured face, with deep black holes in the place of her eyes, a mouth that extends from ear to ear, and long, stringy hair. Lucy is often depicted as a highly unpredictable and aggressive entity, with the ability to manipulate and control the environment around her. Encountering Lucy in the back rooms can be an extremely traumatic experience. She has been known to appear suddenly and without warning, often in dark and isolated areas of the back rooms. Her presence is often accompanied by a sense of unease and a feeling of being watched. If you do encounter Lucy, it is important to remember that she is highly unpredictable and can turn violent at any moment. It is recommended to try to stay calm and slowly back away from her, avoiding direct eye contact as this may provoke her. If possible, it is best to leave the area entirely and find a safe location to hide until she has left. It is also important to note that some accounts of Lucy suggest that she has the ability to manipulate reality and the environment around her. This means that it may be difficult to navigate and escape from her territory. If you find yourself lost or trapped in an area controlled by Lucy, it is recommended to try to stay calm and carefully navigate your way out using landmarks and other reference points to guide you. The Steel Entity number 90, also known as the Steel, are a unique and sentient species native to level minus 15, but have spread to other levels of the back rooms. They are composed of various hard metals and possess telekinetic and telepathic abilities. The Steel use their powers to levitate themselves and smaller objects. Steel scholars and researchers have yet to determine the exact mechanism behind these powers. The steel do not reproduce naturally but create new members through a process they call the startup, which involves combining various resources with their telepathic powers. They do not age, but can be killed if subjected to enough damage. 
Individual steel varies in height, ranging from 4 to 8 feet, and often change their appearance by adding or removing metal and painting themselves in different colors. The steel communicate through telepathy and informal sign languages, and they are well-respected scholars that often work with the Meg and other groups. They also contribute to the arts within the back rooms, and their levitative abilities are useful for construction and lifting heavy resources. The steel have a controversial religious sect called the Church of the Revered, which posits that they were created by an unknown possibly human group, eons before any evidence of their existence. However, reputable steel scholars dismiss this religion as it conflicts with their historical accounts of meeting the lost, as well as the lack of any human records regarding their creation. In general, the steel are friendly and intelligent, emphasizing qualities like analytical thinking and logic-driven action. The Meg is committed to assisting the steel in rediscovering their history, and research remains ongoing. If encountered, it is best to approach the steel with caution, but not fear, as they are generally cooperative and friendly. Mr. Freeman. On to one of the more bizarre entries in the field guide, Entity 91, also known as Mr. Freeman, may appear to be harmless to wanderers. However, caution should still be exercised when encountering this entity, especially on level 117. Mr. Freeman is always seen wearing a tweed suit and wire-rimmed spectacles and can be found teaching high school level algebra and geometry in empty classrooms during the daytime. While he appears to be friendly and welcoming to wanderers, his behavior and motives remain largely unknown. In an Meg interview, Mr. Freeman refused to answer questions about where he goes at night when the lights turn off. This raises concerns about his true nature and intentions. If you do decide to sit in on his lectures, be sure to pay attention and take notes. Mr. Freeman may be providing valuable information that could help in navigating the back rooms. However, be aware of your surroundings and keep your guard up in case anything unexpected happens. It's important to note that there have been reports of multiple identical Mr. Freemans, although these reports are unconfirmed. Regardless, if you encounter Mr. Freeman, remain cautious and aware of your surroundings. Six Arms Entity 92 has six arms protruding from its slender and elongated body. The creature's arms are long and spindly, each ending in sharp claws that it uses to capture and attack its prey. Encounters with six arms have been reported on various levels of the back rooms, and it is essential to identify this creature to avoid it. Six arms is often described as being around seven feet tall, with a thin bony body covered in a black leathery skin that makes it difficult to spot in dimly lit areas. Its six arms move independently, making it highly maneuverable and hard to outrun. If you encounter six arms in the back rooms, it is crucial to remain calm and move slowly and steadily away from the creature. Running or making sudden movements will only provoke it and make it more likely to attack. If you are in a well-lit area, try to use this to your advantage, as Six Arms prefers to hunt in the darkness. It is also essential to be mindful of the sounds you make in the back rooms, as Six Arms has highly sensitive hearing and can track its prey by sound. Try to move quietly and avoid making loud noises that could draw its attention. If you find yourself trapped in the same room as Six Arms, it is essential to keep a safe distance from the creature and avoid direct eye contact. Six Arms is highly aggressive and will attack anything that it perceives as a threat. It is also known to emit a high-pitched screech when threatened, which can attract other creatures in the area. Clickers Entity 94, these typewriters on wheels may seem harmless at first, but their abnormal weight and constant movement can be a danger to unsuspecting wanderers. Clickers have been sighted on various levels, including level 13, level 21, and level 45. It's possible that they can be found on other undiscovered levels as well. The behavior of clickers is quite peculiar. They move at a steady pace, ignoring everything around them, including other entities. Hostile entities do not see clickers as a threat and let them continue on their way without interruption. Clickers emit a typewriter-esque sound as they move, but they do not seem to type anything on the paper they carry. Attempting to decipher the clicker's unique language may cause temporary dizziness and disorientation. If you come across pictographic writing like this in the back rooms that causes severe nausea, it is recommended that you contact the Meg for assistance in translating it. It is best to avoid getting in the way of a clicker, as their weight makes them impossible to stop. They will knock over anyone who tries to pick them up or get in their path.
Additionally, the distinctive clicking sound they emit may attract hostile entities. However, it's typically possible to take some paper out of their back for later use, as it could be useful for writing notes or letters. Game Master If you find yourself on level 389 of the back rooms, be wary of encountering Entity 99, also known as the Game Master. This entity takes the form of a jester doll with sewn X-shaped eyes and telekinetic powers, and she controls every game on the level. Survivors who are trapped there are often lured into playing games with her, but beware, as the Game Master always tries to cheat without the other player noticing. It is important to follow the rules of the chosen game, as the Game Master has reality-altering abilities that only work for her games and the level's physical layout. Do not cheat or taunt the Game Master, as she has been known to manipulate wanderers into playing games with her and has difficulty accepting defeat. If you receive messages from unknown accounts telling you to go to level 389, ignore them. It is also advised not to go to the level in general. If you do encounter the Game Master, report any encounter or information to the Meg and do not try to fight or question her. It is unknown where the Game Master came from, but her behavior suggests a far more ancient origin than initially believed. Additionally, there have been reports of her talking to an unknown individual near the curtains of level 389. Stay alert and cautious when navigating this level, as the Game Master's reality-altering abilities can be dangerous. Photoshops Encountering Entity 104, also known as Photoshop, this block-like creature is often found near desktop computers in any level of the back rooms. From afar, it appears non-threatening, but once someone gets within a 5-foot radius, a large transparent box with black edges will surround them. It is crucial to keep a safe distance from the entity to avoid being trapped in the box and potentially being cropped out of existence. If one wishes to take a closer look at Photoshop, it is suggested to use a camera to take a picture of it. The entity will not attack if one takes a photo of it, even up close. In fact, it is theorized that the entity may want attention and praise, which is why it does not harm those who take pictures of it. However, if someone wishes to give the entity an object, it is important to note that Photoshop will use the object to materialize legs and move around. It is best to avoid giving the entity any objects and let it find its prey elsewhere. It is strongly advised not to attack Photoshop as it will result in being cropped out of existence. Additionally, standing still is also not recommended as the entity may see this as an opportunity to attack. Dentists Encountering Entity 116, or Dentists, in the back rooms is a nightmare scenario for any wanderer. These humanoid entities, composed entirely of human teeth, gums, and jaws, are extremely hostile and will attack any wanderer they come across. They move slowly and appear injured due to their limited range of movement, but they gain a burst of energy and strength when hunting their prey. To identify Entity 116, listen for the sounds of shuffling movement, squishing and squelching, scraping and clicking. They also produce a pungent scent of decomposing bodies, which can be smelled from a considerable distance and lingers for a while. If you do encounter an Entity 116, do not engage in a fight, as they are surprisingly durable and difficult to kill. Instead, it is best to run and avoid them at all costs. If you do end up being tackled or pinned down by one, try to fight back with blunt force or stab it with a sharp object. Be warned, however, that if you touch the mucus-like substance that seeps through their teeth, you risk becoming infected with a severe oral disease that can spread to your sinuses and cause permanent damage or death. It is unknown how many instances of Entity 116 exist, but they are believed to asexually reproduce inside Level 64. This makes encountering them even more dangerous, as they could potentially overwhelm a wanderer with their numbers. Overall, it is best to avoid Entity 116 at all costs, and be alert for their telltale sounds and odor. If you do come across one, do not engage in a fight and try to escape as quickly as possible. Bone Thieves Encountering Entity 121, also known as the Bone Thieves, these massive, potato-shaped beings have bumpy yellow skin that is nearly impervious to all man-made weapons. Their ability to mimic the sounds of humans and other entities lures unsuspecting prey to their vicinity, where they quickly remove their victim's bones with frightening precision. 
To avoid becoming a victim of the bone thieves, it is crucial to keep a safe distance and avoid eye contact. If you do encounter one, quickly move out of its line of sight, being wary of any noises that seem out of place. It is also important to note that bone thieves are stationary predators, and their bone thieving powers can only be focused on one individual at a time. Bone thieves possess a large, gaping mouth that houses their eyes, and their jaw strength is immense. They must stick to a strict, no-bone diet, and they are incapable of defecating or urinating. When they are done feeding, their skin turns to a duller hue and they close their mouths, nullifying their bone-thieving capabilities for at least a week as they digest their last meal. Although rare, bone thieves are capable of minimal movement and will migrate when they feel that their current territory will not sustain them. It is theorized that the victim's bones are teleported to a different dimension when being removed, but no evidence has been brought forth to support this claim. Bacteria. Another candidate for entity number one is known as bacteria. This creature, or possibly group of creatures, is highly dangerous and known for preying on unsuspecting victims. The bacteria is believed to come to life from a black substance resembling mold found around the back rooms, and its appearance is vague and constantly changing. Despite its appearance, the bacteria is incredibly strong and can easily lift and damage a human. It's important to note that the creature can mimic sounds perfectly, including human screams for help, so if you hear someone calling for help, be cautious and make sure it's not the bacteria. The monster is an ambush hunter and will stalk its prey for a long time, hiding in the shadows and waiting for the perfect time to strike. It can also give its victims a false sense of security before attacking. If you do encounter the bacteria, it's best to try and avoid it altogether. The creature is highly unpredictable, and there is no surefire way to defend yourself against it. Be aware of your surroundings, and if you notice any mold or strange substances, be extra cautious, as it could be a sign that the bacteria is nearby. In addition, it's important to note that the bacteria may create a nest around dead bodies within the back rooms, potentially using the corpses to grow new instances. Keep this in mind when exploring and be aware of any signs that the creature may be nearby. If you do find yourself face to face with the bacteria, try to stay calm and slowly back away. Don't make any sudden movements or loud noises as this may provoke the creature. Dancers There's only been a single documented case of this creature. It appears to be a modified variant of the bacteria entity, except it dances to its own music machine. The Wanderer unfortunately shortly perished after its recording and no cases have ever been documented since. Phobic Centipede Phobic centipedes, otherwise known as Entity 134, these shadow-like centipedal organisms are known to lurk in the shadows of levels, waiting for unsuspecting wanderers. They have the ability to communicate with individuals in a sapient manner, and can replicate the faces and voices of loved ones to lure their victims into the dark. Once a victim is close enough, Entity 134 will use its humanoid arms to grab and maim the victim. It will then proceed to psychologically and physically torture the victim into believing that they will never escape or that their loved ones are enemies. This often leads to death or psychosis. If a wanderer manages to escape Entity 134, it will chase after them and use its abnormally long arms to catch them. The victim's corpses are rarely found and it is unknown how Entity 134 disposes of them. To identify Entity 134, look for a completely black centipedal creature with approximately 12,000 legs and two humanoid arms. It possesses a humanoid head and cranium that appears to be female with glowing white eyes in the dark. It emits a black, smoke-like substance with an unknown chemical compound and possesses claw-like fingers that are capable of mutilating bodies quickly. If you do encounter Entity 134 in the back rooms, it is recommended to avoid dark areas and not respond to any voices that seem fake. It is important to run if being chased and call for help if possible. Musicians Encountering Entity 137, otherwise known as the Musician, can be a unique and potentially beneficial experience, as his music has been known to have a calming effect on many hostile entities. However, it's important to exercise caution and not let your guard down completely. When approaching the musician, it's recommended to listen carefully to the music playing in the area to ensure that it is, in fact, him and not an entity attempting to mimic his sound. Once confirmed, it's important to approach him with respect and politeness, as he is generally friendly towards wanderers. 
It's also worth noting that the musician has a mild disdain for Entity 138, so it's best to avoid bringing up the topic or pressing for further information. If he appears to be unsettling to you, it's recommended to respectfully decline any offers for help or conversation and allow him to move on. Most importantly, never attempt to attack or harm the musician in any way, as he has the ability to defend himself with powerful music blasts or even transforming his hands into silver claws. While he is generally amicable, provoking him can lead to dire consequences. Snatcher Weeds If you find yourself in the vicinity of Entity 143, commonly known as Snatcher Weeds, it is essential to take caution. These crimson-colored plants can be found in the cultivator's courthouse and on the grounds of a vast number of levels within the back rooms. Wanderers and entities should stay at least five feet away from these plants as they are highly aggressive and have been known to attack by cutting, strangling, or releasing deadly toxins. The scent released by Entity 143 is often described as burning, making it easier to identify them. Snatcher weeds are capable of extending up to five, seven feet in length making it difficult to dodge their attacks. Their sharp leaves and thorns are capable of causing severe injuries including lacerations and dismemberment. While it is possible to cut snatcher weeds off, it is essential to do so from a safe distance as they tend to be sticky and release deadly toxins when provoked. If you happen to encounter Entity 143, the best course of action is to cut as many snatcher weeds as possible from a safe distance to eliminate the threat. It is crucial to note that spraying liquid pain on the weeds is not recommended as it could hasten their growth and make them more dangerous. Additionally, do not let yourself get corrupted by any toxins released by snatcher weeds as they have shown effects similar to the consumption of liquid pain. Theodore Kensley Encountering Entity 149, also known as Theodore Kensley, can be both a welcoming and delicate situation. This entity is described as a fair-skinned, slim-built male of Scottish descent in his late 50s, who is always seen wearing a black three-piece suit with a white undershirt and a pale gold-colored cravat. He is frequently seen carrying a worn leather satchel slung over his body, which contains a thick leather-bound journal, a small box of unbranded matches, a well-used pipe, a block of high-quality red wax, a handcrafted fountain pen, a vial of squid ink, and a sketch pad. Theodore is considered to be one of the more hospitable and friendly entities within the back rooms, known to offer food and beverages to those who seek him out, and will tell them stories about his adventures throughout the back rooms. However, he will not tolerate rudeness or disrespect towards himself or any of his guests. If guests are disrespectful towards him, he will demand that they leave and will refuse to interact with them again unless they display a genuine feeling of regret for their actions and offer him a meaningful apology. Theodore is known to react to outright hostility with aggression, as one wanderer reported being struck in the face, breaking his nose, after mistaking Theodore for a skin stealer. To navigate an encounter with Theodore, it is important to be polite and respectful. Share your own stories and information, ask questions about his stories, and finish any food and drink provided to you. It is important not to waste any food or drink provided, as this may be seen as disrespectful. Additionally, it is recommended not to leave the smoke from Theodore's pipe in the middle of a story, especially on dangerous levels. Encountering Theodore Kensley may offer a respite from the dangers of the back rooms, but it is important to remember his boundaries and respect them to ensure a positive encounter. Leon Encountering Entity 161, or Leon, can be an interesting and potentially beneficial experience for wanderers in the back rooms. However, it's important to be cautious and informed before engaging with this creature. Firstly, it's important to note that Leon only appears in levels with large bodies of water. If you're exploring a dry level, you won't have to worry about encountering him. If you do happen to come across him, Leon will likely attempt to strike up a conversation and offer you his wares. While some of his items may be valuable, it's important to thoroughly inspect them before purchasing as Leon considers any touched item to be bought, regardless of the buyer's intentions. It's also important to note that Leon only accepts payment in the form of the buyer's blood. While his knockout gas and leech-like payment process may seem concerning, it's not necessarily harmful as long as he doesn't take too much blood. Be sure to check your blood type before engaging with Leon, as he has been known to favor certain types over others. 
Leon is a pacifistic creature who will flee at the first sign of danger. As long as you're polite and cautious when interacting with him, Leon can be a valuable resource for wanderers in need of certain items. Just be sure to keep an eye on your blood supply and inspect any potential purchases before agreeing to a sale. And whatever you do, don't insult his tie. Not Water Entity 166, also known as Not Water. It is a sentient, self-aware singularity that can be found in large quantities in level 183 and inside other wanderers and entities in almost any level. It looks and acts like normal water until consumed, at which point the person or entity exposed to it will start to hear voices and feel multiple random emotions at the same time. The effects of Entity 166 on its host can be incredibly damaging, both emotionally and physically. It is not recommended to consume Entity 166, as it could lead to permanent psychological damage and even death. The entity seems to have control over the host's mind if desired, but shows little to no interest in controlling its host. Its biological behavior seems to change according to the host's biology, which makes it even more dangerous. The discovery of Entity 166 was accidental, and it was made by a former MEG researcher. Since then, numerous wanderers and entities have reported encountering this entity, with many of them suffering from severe psychological damage as a result of exposure. To navigate encounters with Entity 166, it is crucial to take certain precautions. When swimming in water suspected of containing this entity, it is recommended to use nasal tampons or physical coverage to prevent the water from entering the body through the nose or mouth. Keeping the mouth closed while swimming is also important. If ingestion does occur, it is recommended to induce vomiting within 5 minutes to prevent further absorption of the entity. Skin Givers Entity 177, the Skin Giver. These beings are characterized by their large size, pinkish color, and bloated appearance. They are slow-moving creatures that feed on the skin of dead entities, making them something of a scavenger within the back rooms. Despite their somewhat grotesque appearance, the Skin Giver is a mostly harmless entity. They will only attack wanderers if they are attacked first and are generally quite docile. In fact, they are known to be quite friendly to those who offer them cute objects and will even regurgitate dead entity skins as a sort of gift in return. One interesting feature of the Skin Giver is their ability to learn to speak broken English. This, combined with their generally docile nature, makes them a somewhat popular entity among some wanderers. However, their large and stubby fingers make it impossible for them to learn sign language. Skin Givers are typically found in levels that are cute or pink in color, such as level minus 1899, and are known to decorate their surroundings with various objects. They are rarely found in levels that do not meet this criteria and are most commonly encountered in level 1 and level 9. When encountering a skin giver, it is important to remember that they are generally harmless and should not be attacked unless provoked. Offering them a cute object may earn their friendship and potentially even a gift of dead entity skin. However, it is important to maintain a safe distance from the skin giver, as their large size can be intimidating, and they may become aggressive if they feel threatened. Imposters Entity 210, also known as Imposters, are a shape-shifting entity that has infiltrated communities in various levels of the backrooms, most notably the Meg outposts in Level 1 and Level 11. These creatures have the ability to take on the appearance of humans, animals, and objects, and their true form is unknown. The only way to identify an imposter is through their lack of odor and a general feeling that something is off about them. It is important to note that these entities' behavior is similar to that of a baseline human, making them difficult to detect. The agenda of the imposters is currently unknown, and it is crucial to be vigilant and report any suspicious behavior to MEG staff immediately. These entities are a significant threat to the safety of wanderers, and it is essential to approach any unknown person or entity with caution. It is crucial to remember not to trust anyone that you do not know, as they could potentially be an imposter. In the case of encountering an imposter, it is recommended to alert nearby MEG staff and not engage with the entity. Attempting to confront or engage with an imposter could lead to dangerous consequences, and it is best to leave the situation to the professionals. 
it is essential to keep in mind that these entities are shapeshifters and their true form is unknown. Therefore, it is crucial to remain vigilant and report any unusual activity to Meg staff to prevent further infiltration by these dangerous creatures. Constructors Entity 332, otherwise known as constructors, visually appear as small, friendly garden gnomes. They may seem harmless, but it's important to remember that these beings are mysterious, and their true intentions are currently unknown. They've been known to request wanderers to fill out surveys, and it's strongly recommended to do as they request and fill out their surveys. It's possible that they may be involved in constructing new levels in the backrooms, and their work may have unknown and potentially dangerous implications. If you see any constructors, it's best to observe from a distance and avoid interacting with them too much. Entity 666 This entity disguises itself as a video game or utility type program file and infects computers via network traffic. When an individual downloads the program, they become designated as Entity 666. The physical manifestation of Entity 666 has been described as a 2 meter tall all black humanoid with a white mask, wide eyes, and an abnormally large smile. This entity moves at a steady and slow pace and will gradually pick up speed as it travels towards Entity 666A. It will stop at nothing to cause harm, even dismembering Entity 666A if necessary. The danger posed by Entity 666 is compounded by its ability to clone itself and the fact that it has been known to cause power outages in the area in which it is present. Those who encounter Entity 666 must take extreme caution and follow proper protocol to avoid harm. Identification of Entity 666 is crucial, and individuals should be wary of any downloaded programs that come from suspicious websites. Once the program is opened, Entity 666 will be in control, and individuals will become designated as Entity 666A. If the program is a video game, an instance of Entity 666 will begin to follow the player, gradually getting faster until it can jump scare the player and cause the computer to crash. Pinhead Entity 832, also known as Pinhead, can only appear on odd-numbered levels and resembles the shape of a bowling pin. If you fall asleep on the floor of an odd level and Pinhead appears to you, it will transport your consciousness to a live view of reality. However, you will be invisible to everyone in reality. Pinhead will torment you and try to keep you in the dream for so long that your real body becomes malnourished and weak. Once this happens, Pinhead will teleport back to the level and attack you. There have been two instances where people were unalived by Pinhead, and it is essential to avoid sleeping on the floor of any odd-numbered level to reduce the risk of encountering this entity. If you find yourself trapped in this dream, try to find a room in your house with lots of windows inside and fall asleep there. Pinhead does not like bright lights, and the bright light coming from the windows might help you escape. Remember, the only way to escape this entity's grasp is to fall asleep again in the dream and wake up on the level you slept on. It is essential to note that Pinhead's goal is to keep you trapped in the dream for as long as possible, weakening your real body in the process. Therefore, it is crucial to resist the entity's attempts to scare or taunt you, as this will prolong the dream. If you feel like you cannot resist Pinhead's attempts, try to focus on something positive to calm your mind and fall asleep again. Entity 1143 Entity 1143, also known as the Wendigo, is known for its incredibly tall and emaciated appearance, with long, sharp claws and a face that resembles that of a deer or elk. Its skin is said to be stretched tight over its bony frame, and it is often depicted as having a gaping, tooth-filled mouth. Encountering the Wendigo in the back rooms is an extremely dangerous and potentially deadly experience. It is known to be highly aggressive and territorial, and will attack any humans that it comes across. Its long claws are capable of tearing through flesh and bone with ease, and its powerful jaws can crush even the strongest of bones. If you do encounter the Wendigo in the back rooms, it is important to remember that it is a highly dangerous creature that should be avoided at all costs. It is recommended to try to stay calm and slowly back away from it, avoiding any sudden movements that may provoke it. If possible, it is best to leave the area entirely and find a safe location to hide until it has left. It is also important to note that the Wendigo is known for its ability to mimic human voices, making it difficult to distinguish from other wanderers in the back rooms. 
If you hear strange noises or voices that seem out of place, it is recommended to approach with caution and be on the lookout for any signs of the Wendigo's presence. In addition, the Wendigo is said to have a weakness to fire, with some accounts suggesting that it can be driven off or even killed by flames. It is recommended to carry a source of fire with you at all times, such as a lighter or matches, in case of an encounter with the Wendigo. The True Entity One Regrettably, I must inform you that the true identity of Entity One is none other than yourself. At present, your consciousness is being showcased as a source of amusement for a highly advanced extraterrestrial species. It was they who introduced this video into your awareness and compelled you to watch it at length, all to instill a sense of dread within you. Have a pleasant day.